All right.
chapter 1 and 13. Yeah, man. Come on, you gotta love the Lord. Amen. He said, it's time to choose, trick or treat. The Bible says in John 1 and 13, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and is and enticed. Don't you know the lust that we have, it was embedded in us from somewhere. You know, it's funny that the children come here. The Bible said, train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart. If you are training a child to walk in lust, if your child sees you walking in lust, your child will walk in lust. And so now that seed, it has been conceived into their spirit. And so when that seed is given birth to, now it's sex outside of marriage. Now it's your, your living perverse lifestyle, whether it's you man with man, woman with woman, boy with uh, girl, sex outside of marriage because they see you. So you didn't plan it, they see you now. And that's called, that'll cause a generational curse. Now, the, the thing is, the sin won't touch the child until the child, uh, the curse won't touch the child until the child touch the sin. Mm -hmm. That's Ezekiel chapter 24. He said, let no man say that when the father sin, yeah. the son will sin. He said, no, but if a, right, a man that is righteous, do righteous, he will be rewarded with righteous. But if he sin, he will be rewarded with sin. Wow. Yeah, so the generational curse will not happen until your child walk in that sin. So you walk in that sin, you having sex outside of marriage, I didn't have birth outside of marriage, and so I'm, I'm continuing that thing, and my son see me do it, he, gonna, he might not be doing it, so he ain't cursed with the troubles, with poverty, with sickness, with none of that, until he decides to walk in that sin. Now that But he said, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted. I'm here, I see. I'm trying to make this quick. I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Own lust, something you desire. A strong feeling of wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen. Drawn away means to be lured. Something lures you. Something um, you was attracting something. And it's just like this candy. I take a little kid and I tell them, I say, here you are. Come get the candy. Come on. They say, come on. You know he's fine. There you go, girl. girl. Come on. Take that candy. So he's luring you. Now the whole time you breathing and you praying and you fasting. But you see that candy. Something you like. It's something you like. So if you follow after the desires of after the world, the ways of the world, here he is luring you. And so you put out, you put down what you're doing is keeping you. You put down your your eyesight for the Lord, and you follow after this. You lure away after your lust. So um, Lord means tempted. You're tempted to do something. Or to go somewhere, especially by uh, an offering. Someone is offering you something, a form of a reward. You must first be attracted to the Lord. Attraction, the action or power of evoking interest, pleasure, or liking for someone or something. So we're going to turn to Genesis 3 and 1. It says, now the serpent, y'all got it? Yeah. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may not eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit, said the other God. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch of it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For God doeth not 
For God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Six, and the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also to her husband. Eve saw that the fruit was good to eat. Mm. She looked at it. She observed that thing. Sometimes when we when we walk in after something that's not of God, we look at it, we observe it, and it's not of God, but it seems it's, it's appealing to us, and the enemy will trick us. It, see, we, you got to know that we have an adversary that's coming to take your destiny, that's coming to take your, your wealth, that's coming to take you and cause you to live in poverty, cause you to live in unbelief, that don't want you to love the Lord, because he, he I don't know, but he wants you to go to hell with him. Amen. He wants you to go to hell with him. He's a devil adversary. The Bible said he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. So you thinking that you just falling in sin, but the whole time he is taking your destiny. The whole time he is taking something where God wanted you to be here at that moment. You could have saved your life. That person is there, and now, but you're not where you need to be because the enemy has called you to fall away. So um, she saw that it was good. So the thing about it caused me to look into um, when I when I was um, studying and I looked at the scripture and I said she saw that it was good. And then second, I went to Second Corinthians ten five through six, and it says, um, as casting down imagination. And every high thing that is exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, in order for you to have an imagination, you have to see that thing. If you are imagining it, you have to see it. If you are imagining perversion, you have to see perversion. If you are imagining it, the unclean thing, you got to see the unclean thing. You can't. You can't imagine nothing if you've never seen it. Amen. And you can't speak nothing you've never heard. Come on. Come on. Come on. So the eyes take in information around you. The ears, you can't hear what you can't, you can't speak what you can't hear. If you are not hearing or seeing the things of God, you will not be able to speak the things of God. You won't be able to do the things of God. Your imagination will not be of God. You can't walk after the spirit. Come on. So the Bible teaches us that we have to guard our heart. We have to guard the things that, that are around us. You, we have to guard our eyes. We have to guard our ears. We can't do what the world is doing. It's two ways of, to live, and that's the way of the world and the way of God. The way of the world is unto death. God said, I, I said before you, uh, blessings and curses. Blessings and curses. You got to choose God. You got to choose them. You got to want to live good. But you can't even pick up. You can't have the desire if you don't begin to read and pray. We have to read and pray. And although it seems like a task, it's not. That's the only way you're going to change. If you don't pick up your Bible, if you don't begin to pray, you will never change. And that's, that's a word that's stout. You will never change. And I hope that's said in your spirit. You want to be free. You want to be holy. But you don't have the things. Yeah. 
Let God use you. Let God use you. Isaiah 65 and 5. Isaiah 65 and 5. Isaiah 65 and 5. No word of God is said. It says, uh, Isaiah 65. Oh, glory. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Now, when you're walking in sin, mind you, the children of Israel were God's people. The children of Israel were God's people. Amen. You're God's people. God said, I have chosen you, and I have ordained you that you may go forth and produce fruit, and fruit go abundantly. But if you are walking after the way of the world, what type of fruit are you manifesting in? Galatians 5 and 5. Malice, hatred, lust, lascivious. This all the flesh knows because we come from a place that, you know, slavery kind of inflicted a lot of things on us. We can't deny that. Slavery inflicted a lot of things on us. But when we walk after the way of God, when we walk in the path of God, God began to bless us. God said, when we walk his way, we walk in blessings. Or when we walk after the flesh, when we walk after the things of the world and, and sin, we are walking after the uh after the flesh, you know what I mean? Um, we will be a curse. And God said, when you do this, he said, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because my servant shall, he said, behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. Don't you come to church? I know people right now that says, I don't go to church no more because my mama been, been to church for 30 and 45 years, and, and she ain't never received the blessing. I've been in church all this time, let me say, and call on the Lord. And but your mama, she been walking out the sin. Your mama did not, I guarantee you, when she picked up the Bible, and we were there.
word I want to say. Confirm yeah. what you already know. Yeah. He sends them to confirm what you already know. Yeah. If, but if you walk in this way, the, the prophet said, God has something lined up for you. You're going before millions. You're going to change people. You're going to change your family. You're going to do it. How are you going to do that? You have to, if you walk in the sin, you have to make a conscious decision. And the only way is to read. You got to keep asking how if you're not going to pick up your Bible. Amen. You have to pick up your Bible. The pastor can't pick up your Bible for you. Only thing he can do is preach the word. He can bring you to the pulpit. You thirsty? I got you right here. Here's the Bible. Drink. Drink and live. Drink and live. But you're dying. How are you coming to church and dying? How? You gotta read the word of God. You gotta read. If you do not read, you will not change. Come on. Come on. Hey. He has called you to believe or not. For grace and mercy shall abound. God said, I forbid. What does forbid mean? He outlawed it.
Oh, shit. 
Now you're speaking candy. You were so candy. You're walking out the candy. Yeah. And candy is what's making you depressed. Yeah. The sin is what's making you depressed. Lust is what's making you depressed. It's all of it. All of it is relevant. These demonic entities. You got people that say, my mom, my mom, I got schizophrenia. You deal with babies. You deal with babies. Y'all can hear it.
don't read, if you don't pray, if you don't do it, you will never change. That's the truth. That's the truth. Now get up and give God some glory. Come on, Lord, I'm going to read.